This is a video about stupidity on the urban homestead. <laughs> In this episode of Stupidity on the Homestead, we're going to learn what not to do when you go on a weekend conference trip. Well, so... Well, we'll just show you. Yeah, well, here's the thing. <laughs> we tried to solicit help with this, but it didn't work. Well, here's our chicken yard, of course, our converted garden. And uh, we went away for the weekend to attend a conference. And we thought we had this enclosure buttoned up pretty well. We knew there was a neighborhood cat who was checking out the chickens. Um, we were unable to get help to, you know, to find someone who could close that chicken coop door each night. But we left ample food and water for them, thinking they would be okay. Uh, because this enclosure was, you know, buttoned up pretty well. And we still haven't seen where, you know, the predator got in. But unfortunately, both of these pullets are gone. I mean, it's really saggy. I don't know why it got to be so saggy. Well, it could have been whatever was trying to get in here may have been walking on it, or we had a pretty good storm last night. Yeah, it was really, really rainy and windy when we got back. Yeah. So anyway. Well, maybe it got in around the edge over here. Well, I do notice some digging over there. Let's take a look. Look, there's the remnants of one. Yeah. Yeah, there's one chicken taken out, unfortunately. Yeah, see there's some digging here. And uh, I don't know what was digging. But... I was concerned about it getting in here on this side, no. but it didn't. It got in over there at the front. Yeah, and, I guess I... and and here's the other one. Got him right inside the chicken coop. You know, the thing is, we had to leave the door open to the coop. As E-Chip said, we did not, we were not able to get people to help us close this up. So we had to leave it open so they could get in at night. Just as, you know, kind of stupidity on our part by not making sure that that gate was better secured. All right, well, looks like we get to start over. But you know what? I think that this area is too big for them anyway. <laughs> Um, because they spent almost all of their time over there in that corner and didn't do a whole lot of scratching and stuff. So I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we got to get rid of this net or use it, repurpose it. And for a smaller sort of moving chicken tractor kind of thing here in the backyard that we can just pull around to different spots in the yard and they can, and that'll, that'll get them hopefully to scratching up where they should be instead of just hanging out there in the corner all the time. You can see we had this thing, well, it was snipped up pretty tight, but it looks like the animal predator would have managed to push itself through here and uh, got in that way, I guess. But it's pushed in right there. Oh. So, you know, before we left, I wanted to get a stick of some kind to run through here to stiffen it before we, you know, buttoned it up. But I didn't get a chance to. And yeah, that's pretty loose right there, but... It's, well, and it looks like he just squeezed through right there. I don't think we have any raccoons or anything around here like that. Skunks. I've never smelled any skunks around here. I've never seen any raccoons, although I'm not really out in the middle of the night or anything like that. Well, we live and learn, huh? So, oh. we'll build it stronger and go back to square one. But, yeah, I don't know. Back to square one. I guess maybe just make a smaller chicken run, Get take these T-posts down here, and just make a chicken run this way. Yeah. Well, you know, one solution may be just to put some wheels, put some wheels on the back of these, uh, on these back legs, and then connect it to a larger, you know, sort of hoop type chicken tractor that we can drag around and reposition in the yard because that was the one thing I noticed that all the chickens just hung out over there underneath that tree on that grass pile or a little compost pile I never really did much of anything they did a little scratching in the morning but otherwise they didn't do much well, they never occupied any of this so yeah, too much space for them they didn't really scratch but anyway my bad sucks being stupid didn't it
Well, I'm the one that did it. Don't I'm say talking, that. I'm talking about both of us. <laughs> well, I didn't. I honestly, I really, I'm honestly, I really did not think anything would come in through this. Yeah, I didn't think anything would bother trying to push through that. I mean, I know it's loose wire, but yeah, I really want it in. But that's where it did. You're right, because that's all pushed in. And Consolation may be that it was painful for it to get out. <laughs> so even though it had a belly full of chicken. Okay, so as you saw in the video, we killed a couple of chickens. No, we didn't kill them. A you know predator them. killed them. <laughs> because of us, because we were stupid. Uh, but uh, that's okay, because thanks to Thomas Schmidt Homestead Project, we have a temporary fix until we can get some more chickens in here. Here it is. Hey folks, you made it to the end of the video, and that means we have a special treat for you. As you know, we were at the Mother Earth News Fair a few weeks ago, and we have a collection of kind of neat things that we gathered there, and they're in a little prize package for one lucky winner. Okay folks, well here's our prize package. Um, just to go through it really quick, pack out of lettuce, pack out of carrot seeds um, by Baker Creek. Um, a CD ROM on heirloom vegetable gardening, and there is I think there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff in here. I, I think there it's like an ebook, um, and then there are 111 articles from Mother Earth News on this CD, and a T-shirt printed with uh, organic cotton. It's got a pretty cool, I don't remember what the design is on the front, but it's, I remember it being pretty cool and that's why we chose it. Um, a contentment mug, suitable for your beverage of choice. Um, a, a um, I don't know, a, a making yourself pretty kit, for lack of better term, from Obagi for life. Uh, skincare products, including the uh, SPF 50 sunscreen, a foaming cleansing gel, and a, an AM toner, and then this gift bag that goes with it. And then, for it all to go inside, we have this really nice uh, Colombian gunny sack, you know, coffee sack. So, and uh, then also we have three premium issues. Now, I don't know if you know how Mother Earth News works. They issue these premium issues, which is basically a compilation of select articles from the regular magazine. There's one from Grit, which is a Mother Earth publication, and then two from Mother Earth News. This one's on chickens. The Grit stuff is more technical, how to or do it yourself. The Mother Earth News stuff is more general, and there's one on growing and preserving your own food, and one a guide to living on less. So all of this, and don't ask me what the value is because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all this can be yours if the price is right. Entering is really simple. All you have to do to be entered is in the comments below, tell us which of our videos you like the best and why. You have until Sunday, November 10th to make your comment. We will put all of those names into that randomizer drawing thing. And we're going to have a live show on Sunday, November 10th at 7 p.m. Central. So in order to be eligible to win, you need to have your comment made before that time. So thank you for watching the video and we'll catch up with you on the next one.